Good afternoon. Paul, I think they're having some technical difficulties. Alex okay. just texted me. Um, so he just okay. said we're having computer issues. So that could no. be their delay. Yeah, no worries. And Michael Woods won't be here today. I assume you were told that? Yes, I think I got an email saying he'd be gone. Yeah, that's why Cheryl's on, to make sure we're all right, Cheryl. <laughs> And Mr. Briand, um, Matt Briand, I think is attending for Michael. Is that right, Cheryl? She probably has it silenced. I think Matt is there. So if you need to turn questions um, that you would turn to Michael, it would be um, Matt Briand. Okay. So I will go silent and take off my video. And if I have anything new, I'll let you know. All right, thank you, Holly. Thank you. Can you hear us? Oh, you can't hear us? I don't think she can hear us. Well, there must be a computer problem throughout <laughs> all of Branson. <laughs> It'll be just you and me today. <laughs> there oh, there we go. go. There's a lot of support. Yeah. Yeah, Matt's there. Paul, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Let's... Uh... I'll have you uh, call the roll, please. Sure. So uh, Gail is present. Billy? Yes. Uh, Steve? He's not absent. He's absent. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Brian? Here. Chuck? He's absent. Uh, Kathy? And Larry. Here. Okay. So we got four. Yeah, we have four. We're glad everybody's here. So if you will, let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, oh, thank you so much for the opportunity to do, do good things for the community. We'd ask that you would be with uh, Michael Woods as he uh, grieves a loss and uh, uh, protect him, guide him. Uh, and, and focus on the heavenly host of angels uh, that welcome people to heaven. Uh, we ask that you would give us strength and wisdom to do your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so you should have all received the January 31st minutes, and I would uh, entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. That was Billy and Brian uh, Paul. Yes, thank you. And uh, Cheryl, uh, hang on one second. Never mind, it's recording. I can okay. set it for automatic. Sorry. Uh, CID Financials. Okay. Sure. Let's pick it out. Okay, what's here? Oh. All right. Okay, here we go. So for January, if you look at the second second column, that's our year to date actuals. Okay, so year to date so far, we have five hundred and seventy four thousand seven hundred eighty six thousand in revenue. Um, our revenue is looking really good, actually. Um, if you look at the percent column, 
uh, sales and use tax is at 9.4 and uh, the interest income is at 19.5. And if we were going on an average, like January's one twelfth of the year, it would be at 8%. So we're running high. Um, the total is a little misleading because we have the bonds in there for the budget. So, um, and then expenditures here today, we only have $413. So not a lot of activity happening. Um, and then if you go down to the transfers, you'll see where we did pay the $600, Six million two hundred seventy-four thousand and seventy-four dollars. Um, so that was paid back to the city. And thank you. And then the other transfers. Um, so net of all the activity, we had a decrease of five million seven hundred twelve thousand seven eighty-three. We started January off with fourteen million um, forty thousand three hundred and nine dollars, and we ended the year with eight million three hundred twenty-seven thousand five twenty-six. Um, if you go to the balance sheet. Currently in cash, we have $7,289,131 receivables of a little over a million, giving us uh, total assets of $8,339,487. Our fund balance here today is $8,327,527. And then the next page just kind of shows where the cash is at. So the central bank account, that's our operating account. We have $1,122,000. And two dollars and sixty three cents. So that one we earn four point oh five percent interest in. The next one is our investments with BLK. So we have six million one sixty seven one twenty eight forty one, and in that we have a range of investments between four point seven five and five percent. Go to the next page that will cover our um, our CIB tax. Okay. So if you look, let's go to the year to date ones. The month-to-month -month comparison in the year-to-day comparison is pretty similar. Um, on the month-to-month, -month, we have a 2%, 2.6% increase year-over-year. -year. And if you look at prior year, that's in 2023, we had a 14.6 in February. So we're still increasing on top of a really high prior year, which is amazing. Really, really amazing. So we're excited with that. Um, and remember, this report is based off of December activity, and we had a really good December. Weather was great. A lot of people came to town, so a really good December. Um, and then you want to go to the next report. That's a report that I made for Gail. Um, and this is when the stuff is actually filed uh, with the state of Missouri. So um, this would be, uh, and this, they could also be paying like prior taxes, like some people pay quarterly and stuff, but. The filing, when we look at year over year, we see a little bit of a decrease, but um, it's just one report is when we, when the money is, it's tricky. When the money, like this is December activity that we're receiving in February, and the other one is actual when they're filing through the end of the year. So it's not apples to apples. It's not apples to apples. So if you're missing a month here, is that what it was? Yeah, I think it's like a yeah, month flag. Yeah. Yeah, because basically, well, no, it's really global 105 to 94. Yeah. Because there's a month missing. Yeah. So. Right. And then the next. So you think that's going to be better than the yeah, 532? I think so too. Yeah. Because we're what we're seeing coming in is higher. Like we're running really good. It would have to be because we're collecting more tax. Yeah. Yeah. And then and the next is just the detail of the activity. As you can see, we didn't have that much activity. Uh, there's a few checks over at Rich. So. Three. Three. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 back on this comparison. Yeah, you got to see this one. You were. Okay, back on this comparison chart. Is there a way that this can compare something? Because I get this report from the state of Missouri, and then I did have to go in and categorize it by the categories. Um, but. You can next month, though. You can next month. Yeah, I can make maybe a, like a lag report that yeah, we could show. That's what I was yeah, asking. Yeah. If it was a lag report, we could compare. Yeah, yeah we can compare. compare yeah. 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 I think that that only yeah. do that next time. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> hey, and that's all I have for the financials. <laughs> you, what questions do you all have for Sherry? Thank you for doing this. I'm fine. Any questions? Well, I, I have one. Well, I have two. Um, 
So the six million was transferred out. I'm just curious, what what is the cost now of the uh, the theater conversion to the to the uh, fire and, and the police? Oh, what what do we what is it going to end up being? Sixteen million. Sixteen million. Is that all close? And then the, the other thing, I, I think it's great that you, now you're getting a good interest rate on it. Thank you. And uh, we are start looking at we can get higher interest rates. I um, did have an RFQ for our investment broker, and we have picked one. We picked PMA. They work with the Branson schools. They work with the Reese schools. They, they work with a lot of the schools in this area. Okay. Really, really good. So we're going to be in the process of transitioning to them. So I got Holly involved because it's a little tricky because there's a lot of money, and I need her help and guidance. But sure. hopefully in a few months, we'll get to them. So. Sure. Yeah, because they, you know, originally, I mean, what we were told, what we were told, not that, you know, I get all kinds of information, but uh, that we might see a percent and a quarter decline this year in interest rate, but they backed off of that. Now it's between half and three quarters, and they're still offering, in some cases, 5.4%. So their cost of money is still there, right? Yeah. How can you go down if your cost of money right. is still there? Right. So, yeah. Any other questions? If not, I, I entertain a motion to approve the financial report. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion. If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Um, Paul, talk to us about bond council RFP. Yeah, so as we kind of continue to inch forward to the financing, um, similar to the services we got, we're getting from Todd Walsh and need some bond counsel. So this RFP document follows the same general outline as what I used for the financial advisor. Um, Todd's provided his comments. I haven't quite figured out the due date. It'll probably be, oh, probably right around March 20th or so. Um, that way we can at least have something to report back at the March 27th. There's only a few firms in Missouri that do this sort of work. Um, so there's just kind of the usual suspects that I'll send this to. And then similar to how we did the FA, I'll just have them submit it directly to Cheryl. If that's right with you, Cheryl. Sure. Um, Any, anything in the document that you want to point out that you think is significant to educate us? Um, so if you go just to the submittal requirements, I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff. Um, again, there's only just literally single digit firms in the state that do this sort of work. Um, and, you know, it's all public finance type work. The only thing we want to make sure about is any potential conflicts of interest. Um, we've asked for proposed issuance cost similar to what we did with Todd, that last bullet point there on the submittals, um, just so we can compare apples to apples. All the firms that I have in mind, they're all equally competent. That's not the issue. Um, it's some one or two may have a conflict down there and then we'll just see how aggressive the other couple are on their pricing. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. 
So one question I have, Paul, is when they come in, open them on the 20th and then scan and send them to you? Um, yeah, whatever date we put in there, Cheryl, I'm going to coordinate that with you. Um, okay. You know, at 2 p.m. there, whatever date works best for you. I just kind of put that in as a placeholder. Once okay. we hit that deadline, um, I, we can talk. I don't have a problem with you, you know, opening them at that point and scanning them out. Tomorrow. I'll have Matt. I'll have Matt with me so that I have a witness. <laughs> yeah. And if, if I remember right, if we only got one last time, we did not open it. That's correct. Okay. So yeah, and and you know, you guys. I mean, that's fine. Except, you know, again, there aren't there aren't that many firms in Missouri that do this sort of stuff. So. Um, just keep that in mind. There, there's a there's a finite pool of potential respondents. As long as we do our diligent, our do our due diligence, um, we should be all right where that's concerned. As long as we make sure we have documentation of who we sent them to. Right. But how does how does Todd weigh in? Well, fine. How does how does he weigh in on this whole issue? Well, um, again, Todd, Todd works hand in glove with these bond council firms. So he knows them. I know them. Um, I'll talk to Todd. We'll kind of make our joint recommendation, if you will, to the CID board. Um, but there's a lot of interaction between the financial advisor, the bond council, and then ultimately, you know, we'll have another RFP type document coming down the road for the underwriter. And so all three of those parties kind of work together um, to sell the debt. And they each have a role to play, but they do work closely with one another. Um, but because the, 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 uh, the club, if you will, is so small, they all know each other. They work with each other from deal to deal. You know, some cities may use firm A, other cities use firm B. You know, it's all it's all intertwined. So there, there's no player in this space in Missouri that that doesn't know the other players and hasn't worked with them. Yeah. Do you need anything from us or do you need a no, I mean, I've, if there, unless there's any objection, I'll go ahead and finalize this. I'll coordinate with Cheryl. Uh, I'll email it out. I'll send you all a list of the firms that I send it to. And then we'll set that, that submittal date a few, a few weeks out and we'll report back at the next meeting. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm assuming there's a requirement we'd have to use a Missouri firm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Bill, any questions? Brian? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And state funding request up to Well, um, since um, we initially met with Carla Eslinger and she agreed to take um, a funding request to the state um, budget for us. Uh, she also recommended that we uh, solicit support from other political um, allies and uh, representatives. So to that end, one, two, three, four, Gail and I, either together or separately, have had five or four or five meetings with additional reps to make sure they're first educated and aware about the 76 project and its importance, and then secondly, requesting whatever they might do for us um, in terms of um, locating funds and or being an advocate for us at the state level. So um, we met with Brian Seitz. He um, agreed to distribute a letter on our behalf and has done so uh, just a couple of days ago to the governor, speaker of the house and the budget chairman. Uh, we met with Eric, Senator Eric Smith, Schmitz, uh, representatives from the Springfield office. They're looking into funding options 
um, and looking to set up a DED meeting with us uh, regarding the opportunity zone and what might be available um, through that um, program for funding. Uh, Gail got a chance to meet with Brad Hudson, who also is uh, very supportive and contacted the budget chair on our behalf, even um, that day that they met on Saturday. Um, and then we've got another meeting set up with Eric Burleson, 7th District um, US Rep in March. So um, just trying to cover all the bases. The latest thing I heard this morning was from Senator Esslinger's office, and she asked if we could find a, a political advocate for the cause outside of our immediate district so that she could help make the case statewide that it isn't just a Branson specific or Taney County specific um, economic development impact, that it truly is a regional um, issue. So I'm working with Jonas and, and Monica, but would be happy if anybody else has ideas on who that. Um, wingman might be for Senator Esslinger um, as they move into the budgeting process up there. Again, you know, the ask is 37 million. Um, we don't expect that. <laughs> but we have as, much as, as much as we can get, that's right. And we have been told, ooh, that's a lot considering our budget this year. Um, but, you know, you can always negotiate down. It's a lot harder to negotiate <laughs> up, right? So um, that's where we sit and we continue to try to do uh, friend and fundraising on behalf of the project of wherever we can fund a little bit of cash. So maybe it'll happen, maybe not. Worst case scenario, a lot of folks know about the project, the importance of the project, and um, are, can be advocates wherever that opportunity might come up. So that's great. Every okay. couple million helps. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's well, it, it, it is. has been interesting. Um, you know, listening to these folks. First of all, the benefit of Branson is I don't have to explain it to these reps. They've all been here. They're paid. The senator has been here. They've been here. And so I think that's for the year. Um, the, the one thing, though, and Mayor, I'm not sure what the city's relationship is with Springfield, and I had not heard this before. Yeah, I just but, but you'll remember. There was a time when Springfield was trying to capitalize on Branson. That's why it's the Springfield Branson Regional Airport. And maybe somebody from Springfield to do that with Mercy. Because if we, you know, if we smith, if we sell more Coca-Cola here, all that Coca-Cola comes from Springfield, you know? And uh, um, so there is some benefits for Springfield to doing that. Um, the other thing that they all really like, if you get the opportunity to talk to these folks. They like the idea that this, uh, I've been telling everybody this is a legacy project. And I didn't realize how, how, what should I say, how they thought that was profound because our elected officials like to do legacy projects. So uh, that, that almost like a hot button. So you agree with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, and even from the very first meetings with Carla, something we can get done sooner as opposed to later, right? Yeah. Something too that you know, we can show some that we've accomplished something that's important too. So it's a beginning and you know, you know as well as I do, get funding is a journey. And so uh, we'll see, yeah. see what happens. But they've all been very positive. Nobody has said, oh, well, this can't be done. No one has said that. Uh, in, in fact, we had one person ask us if they could just uh, suggest that we get some money to read. Oh, yeah. that's, that's good. Yeah. Well, the problem is they can't. They can't. They can't obligate. Just like the city, they can't obligate. Yeah. They put it in there. They can't obligate. So you won't be guaranteed. I'm like, no. We'd rather have all the money. Okay. Okay. Super. Thank so, you. If you need anything else, let me know. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, Fran? Appreciate her organizing all the information. Uh, website of website, yes. Uh, you will remember that in December, I brought you a couple of options for website um, developers and hosting. Um, the prices varied a little bit, and the board requested more time to review um, the work of those two vendors, and, and you give that recommendation. Um, I had asked for some feedback via email. I heard from a couple of the board members, but um, not a majority. So um, it just sort of got tabled until holidays passed and we could um, attack it again. It also gave me time to do a little bit more um, investigation and um, into some of their recent work. And I would 
bring to you a recommendation, a pretty strong recommendation today to go with, uh, I think we call them vendor number two. Uh, they are the vendor who, have, who has done Elevate Branson and the core websites locally. Um, I've looked at all of their examples. They all seem to load quickly. They all seem to look fairly good. Um, but I think that's the firm that will give us um, a little bit um, more security over the long term. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're not a one-man shop. So um, I feel like that's um, going to be a better option for us. And their uh, website development experience is much more recent than the other individual that I brought to you. So I hope that the board might um, take my recommendation and let me move forward with um, inking an agreement with that firm as a reminder uh, first year cost is going to be somewhere between uh, $4,200 and $6,000. Um, and the ongoing host and annual hosting and updating is something around $2,500 uh, for this website with this firm. So not a tremendous amount of money, um, but um, I do think that it's time for us to have a presence and to be able to direct people to this sort of information source. Uh, where we can keep updates readily available and uh, get the community excited again about this project. It's going to start moving soon. Would it be appropriate for me to make a motion to approve that? But... So, so Ann, can you send me the agreement? The board will need to approve that next month in the open yes. session. So if that vendor number two, of course, that will be identified. Um, right. Send that to me and we'll review it and then put it in the form of a resolution to approve. Okay. The, um, but to Larry's question, do you want a motion to approve me going ahead with securing an agreement with vendor number two? Yeah. Well, I think it's a motion to, to recommend whoever this vendor number two is uh, and bring it back at the next meeting for approval. image makers if you want to make that specifically okay. uh, instead of waiting for next month's meeting Paul is there a way we can approve it can we don't have the document in front of us so I'm not really sure what we'd be approving um, have no idea what the fine print is so best practice is if you're going to approve a contract to have the contract in front of you so you know exactly what you're approving. So, so Paul, is it appropriate to basically say, okay, and we uh, proceed, bring us the agreement with vendor number two, and next month Larry can make that motion and we can second it and approve it at the next meeting? Is that the way to do it then? Right, because the re we'll, we'll prepare a resolution approving the agreement and authorizing somebody to sign on behalf of the CID board, but right now, we don't have an agreement to approve because it doesn't exist. Well, let's make sure if, that, if you're all right with that, let's make sure that's on the agenda for next time. Any other comments or questions for Ann? Thank you, Ann. Uh, okay, so just a general reminder, last time I passed out a sheet of paper that was just a cost starter about city incentives, and I think Alex, you said that you thought the alderman should, should discuss that. I don't believe that Larry and, and Kathy were at that meeting. Um, so I just put it on here as a placeholder. Uh, is there any any report, anything you want to talk about? Share it with the alderman, share it with them here. Um, and then have a conversation and discussion. Yeah. If we can discuss it, as you know, tomorrow night is a third meeting on this same topic. A few questions that I had, I would really want to get the board's input on is a couple things in particular. One is there are current lodging properties on the strip that are attempting to convert to residential use. And I thought one time I heard from this board that we really like to focus on encouraging tax generating entities along 
the strip because that's the funding source for our continued CID funds. Assuming that's we're in agreement on that. Um, how strong does the board, does this board feel? Because at tomorrow night's meeting or whenever it's appropriate, um, I would bring up that topic. Um, and I think there was some discussion about a zoning move we made for the entertainment district and possibly either possibly put in restrictions for any properties in the 76 CID corridor that they would be limited to tax generating properties. So I'm having a conversation with myself. So no, well, no. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 as I told Alex earlier, it's complicated. Um, so, I mean, I'll give you my opinion. I agree with you. I don't think that we would, um, well, we have three choices. A good living space, a good hotel, or a bulldozer. Those are your three choices. Okay, but do you really want good workforce housing right on 76? And I think that's the question. Unfortunately, we have business, so we have buildings on 76 today. Uh, now, Somebody mentioned to me that the Outback wants to convert. Oh my gosh, the Outback is way back there. Okay, I think that's different. Uh, Henley even is off the strip. It's not facing what this board's mission is. What gives me heartburn personally is those hotels across from Whitewater. Like, really? What are we doing here? And, and they're not hotels anymore. And um, if I had a joystick and a bulldozer, those personally, those are one of the first ones that probably would come down. And um, because I think they have a higher and better use for the, the guests to this community than that use in that location. That's just my opinion. Brian. Brian. Um, Cheryl made the same mistake. My beard does not. <laughs> but I have the excuse that I didn't put it on that. It's a lot more white. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I agree with with both of you. Um, but I don't, it is it's complicated. Don't I don't believe we need workforce housing on 76, nor was that ever the intention for the entertainment district. You know, that's entertainment focused. Um, but something does have to, to happen for a, a potential developer to come in and say, hey, I want to do that. You know, we need workforce housing too. And unfortunately, we need it in fairly close proximity to the entertainment district uh, due to the lack of public transportation. So I don't know, you know, the the fix or the right answer, uh, but I would I would support you know uh, something, whatever that may be, to restrict housing on or in the entertainment district. Okay, really? You have an opinion? Um, yeah, um, you know, I, I think about this housing, I know there's the Jayway housing, and there's also the, the workforce that do live here, that are, because Jay one here for the summer. Mm -hmm. So, then the workforce that are here, I don't know if they're going to be living in this area, but, you know, I, I look at Las Vegas, I, you know, would you ever build anything around there? In the strip, no, I mean, it's all about the entertainment and all that stuff. And I know we are having problem with branding, with a lot of what you call difficulty of, uh, you know, divisionally facing kind of deal. So, I, you know, there's the second tier, like, you know, the outback, and there's places that, like the Green Mine Drive, you know, we're just right there on the strip. And my only thought is just if we could. 
look at the overall, we can already spend a lot of money to fix, you know, 76 that we can look pleasing and all stuff. And I'm not sure there is, because there's like, if you look at the Dunn Theater behind the um, um, Roland Fogel property, I don't know what the housing is behind it, like apartments, but I know is there even there is a really eyesore, a lot of stuff, a lot of vandalism uh, that, that are complaining and they can't prove it, but we, we think that the, 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 the fire start because somebody smoking and dropped a cigarette into the trash in front. And they're the only one that walks by the theater. That's one reason they, and you, while we work in the construction, I can see people walking through there all the time. And they cross that, they, they basically they come from the parking lot you know, so I, you know, I, I think somewhere there uh, we, we need to figure out what's best for Branson. We're not talking about, you know, because it is a complicated, like Brian said, it is complicated, uh, but it's somewhere has got to step up and say, you know, we're trying to do this, we'll fix this, we'll do this, and it's somewhere there we got to cut loose and say, we need to be firm about what we're doing on 76. Because it's a very valuable product. That is what our bread and butter. Yeah. And so the question is, how much do you want to get into the kind of stuff? Because those those guys basically do not have the uh, what do you call it uh, the same value and concept as people that they are the stakeholder. They are spending a lot of money to make sure that things looks beautiful and this and that. So. That's not anything but it is. Well, if we can, let's separate, because I'm hearing two different issues, so let's separate them. One is the aesthetic appeal. Yes. Right? The other one is the financial support. This CID board won't have any funds to work with if the more and more residential uses. Mm -hmm. So then if you look down the road, at the end of the day, there won't be enough funds to continue doing what our mission is, right? And, and here's where it becomes complicated. So just like in the hotel business, there are good operators and there are poor operators. Right. We've met a few of the poor operators, by the way, but go ahead. Just recently, yes, I got it. Okay. <laughs> well, the same thing in workforce housing. There's some good operators. There's some poor operators. Well, you don't want to build a slum on 76. And um, so I think it's great to talk about density. Hi, it's great. Um, I think it's great to talk about square footage by number of occupants. Okay. We know in the hotel business, a standard hotel room, I only have five people in that room. Okay. To this day, you don't want to buy people that live in that room. Right. And so, so. We can talk about square footage of what really could occupy a room. And um, um, the uh, and I I buy some workforce housing for both J1s and H2Bs. It's hard to come by. Good housing. You know, I've been in some of the places where it's like we're not better. Yeah. Okay. And um, um, so you know there is demand. And that's why these people have all these things full, is there's demand for workforce housing. And it also fits into an economic reality of some of the people who work in Brands, who may not have transportation, who uh, want to walk in. And so one example would be in the country in Thousand Hills. You know, there's that property right across the street. And, and they used to do a pretty cool, mediocre job. They're doing better as far as keeping the place clean, you know, have a little effect on on other stuff, but I have some employees who live there and walk across the street to work. Okay. So is that a bad thing? As long as it doesn't affect, as long as it looks nice and it doesn't affect my guests, it's okay. When it looks bad, when their clientele wants to come over and eat my continental breakfast for free, you know, that's bad. And and so um, how do you regulate, how do you regulate that? How do you regulate poor management? I'm not sure, but I, I I I think your discussion about density, your discussion about location is very appropriate, and there will be some progress. Okay, once again, 
maybe just to cut to the chase. Again, I'm hearing the the aesthetics. So if it was workforce housing that looked appealing, that was on the strip, how does this board feel? Because it then crosses over into, it's not generated out of revenues that we need regardless of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, if you allow one to outside investor, wouldn't be concerned about investing in places that are next to something like that. Uh, so, if the question is, as, as you deal with the kind of stuff that you're talking about, is this is, uh, is guy going to have a heart? You know, heart attack? Okay, so you say you do placing all that stuff, but I think the biggest question is say you dress it up nice and Make sure you follow all the rules, and, um, and it can work. I mean, that's, you know, it's just I'm just saying for people, other people that may be coming here, they may, may they may, but in the long term, ten years or fifteen years master plan, is that a good idea? It's, I would say, yeah, yes. In my opinion, we're at a point now at the city with these discussions to make some of these decisions. Yes. Because yeah. if we number one, if we don't make a decision, or we make a decision that fits near term, but 10, 20 years from now, we're gonna look back and say, man, we wish we wouldn't have yeah. allowed that. Right. But I think we're at a point now where we can either bury our head in the sand and let somebody else deal with it. Or I think we have an opportunity to address it today. So, yeah. So that's the end in mind. But how long do you want to wait? So, so for example, uh, the property. Let's see. Where would this be? This would be just east of the Outback. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, it goes down yeah, hill. Yeah, yeah. Had that swimming pool yeah, out yeah. front. Well, how long has that building? It's either empty or whatever. Looks like heck, but how long has it been? So it's an empty building. That's an eyesore. That's another one with a joystick and bulldozer, right? And the uh, uh, and so if I have a building out there, not being if there's a building out there that is uh, failing as a hotel, okay, for one reason or another, that's probably a separate discussion. But it's failing as a hotel. They want to convert. Okay, so it takes money to convert. We say, you're in this entertainment zone, we don't want you to convert. And I, I personally, I believe we do not want workforce housing on the face of 76. But, but it's better to have good workforce housing than maybe to have the empty building. And so if you have the empty building, the guy's like, I don't have the money. And so I'm going to declare bankruptcy, he's going to sit there, whatever. And it sits there for years, well, that's worse than if we had a good workforce housing. And um, so all of a sudden it becomes complicated and, and you gotta have discernment. Um, the lodging approach was you gotta get them out of lodging so that you can regulate them the way you want to regulate them. Because if you try to regulate in this hotel, you're never going to get to where you want to get to. That was the lodging association approach, and it's still the lodging association approach. I don't know if that's the best approach, but that's the that's the way the lodging industry feels. Um, so what's what do you want? What's the transition? Okay, so it sits there for a while as an empty building. Someone in the says, Oh, this is a good location. Let's either tear it down, build a new hotel, build an entertainment facility, build an attraction. But if you think about, if you took the average of buildings that have kind of gone through that, that sat empty, it's years. You know, how long did Shoji, has Shoji's theater sat empty? How long has, did some of those buildings sit for years after the tornado? And so do we want these buildings sitting empty? And, and I think the answer is no. We've got to figure out what we want in the end of the world. And it may be that this building, it needs to go, but this building, it's not nearly as black and white as I would like for it to be. Okay. Thing is, but yeah, the, um, like we discussed this for first uh, housing myself, 
Has there been determined um, the domain in terms of size and how many people they're going to probably for the for the size of rents and they, are we going to be building a lot of this what you call housing that can say empty or, or full or uh, has somebody done any kind of study to say okay we're probably going to, but five of this is all we need or has somebody done that? Okay, yeah, yeah, the, 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 recent, the most recent, I think it's been updated in the last year. Oh, so it's been, there's, there's another word. We know how many units yeah. Jonas brands in the So it's based on the size of workforce that we need to support needs, right? this and this and this. <laughs> we're going to need this many room for yeah. so many people. How big is that? How many rooms on number? How many people? Thousands. Thousands? They actually have a number of units even. To match growth. Okay. They have that figured out. I, they have I, a, I it my office. They have an immediate need and then a projected need. So I'm going to, I'll just try this one more time and then I'll move on. I don't know that this issue that I'm addressing is as complicated. I'm looking for more clarity on, I don't want to say it, uh, an easy answer. But a simple answer, aesthetics is one that we're all concerned with, right? From this board's perspective, and not that this board has for isn't going to be the holy grail. It's just another opinion providing the city direction of how do we as a community want to go. So what I'm hearing is there's... I'm hearing both sides, so I guess they're, this board's deciding not to take a position. Uh, as we continue the city meetings, this board does not have a position on, uh, we think it's in the CID's, in the community's best interest to limit tax producing properties in the corridor, that would be the improvements. Uh, understanding we all I mean it goes without saying we need workforce housing. Yeah. But if it if it was a if it was residential townhomes, I mean if it was any kind of residential use that comes to the city and says we want to take that area uh Birkin property uh yeah, you know, the Somebody somebody comes in and says, I want to, I'm going to purchase the Mazios property. I'm going to put in single family uh, townhomes for residents on that property. What's that? Well, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not a board member, but I don't think we want residential. In a what I'm trying to ask. And I think is, that tax because when those things are brilliant, we're at a crossroads. And I'm telling you, this is an opportunity to make some decisions. I know you're not a board member, but you, your opinion is the Mazio's property would be not in the city's best interest to allow that to be long-term residential use. I'm no economic development expert, but I do know that you talk a lot about highest and best use of properties. And the highest and best use of those five miles for all of Branson in the region is this project that we're working on and trying hard to get funded and make happen. And it's not for residents, I'm sorry. It's for visitors I and it's for tax collecting. I happen to agree with that. I think it should be entertainment. It should be businesses, yes. cut, to cut to the chase, businesses that pay to live in Because mm -hmm. it's really hard to legislate aesthetics. You know, you, you can all have opinions about good operators, bad operators, pretty buildings, bad not operators. operators. Pretty buildings. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got their opinion on that, right? But, but you can't say, are you going to be collecting the tourism tax? Yeah. And if you're not, then you don't belong in this district. Well, can't, I think that's brilliant, personally. I don't know if you're, because I didn't know that we're supposed to have any say so in terms of CID board, in terms of, but I think the biggest thing is thing that uh, it's not just aesthetic, by the way, it's the uses of the building. Yeah. So it's not just, I mean, if you had a bunch of stuff, you know, but also as a someone that, um, especially as a mayor, uh, there's 
And the same, they don't have a second, seven, and eight. There's six at the end where the Fritz Adventure is, okay? But there's critical land in that seven and eight. That Muzio has got to be something. If you think about, if you want to fix something, you want to help someone, some businesses, that is a property you want to help. You say, I'm going to, whoever first come first, I'm going to put money and I'm going to help you to do this, but that is a very important. So if you look at some of the available land, you can't do much of anything. So if you're going to take the biggest chunk of land that is in segment seven and eight and do something like that, I don't have an opinion. I'm just thinking, wow. I, I, I seriously would have a concern if, if I had, if there's anybody, because I'm just, I have no voice in this thing here. So I don't know, but I, that is, you look at that section, there's not too many places. I look at that every day, and I drove and I drove, and I told him that one of the things that I would like to do is to do the master plan of seven and eight to say, I can develop it like if I was, you know, so that I can entice business people to come and say, okay, this and this, and then you guys identify this is the land that I would, would help someone, first one to do this and this, because everybody else is kind of like the what Joe Lauber talked about in the project and McDonald, where everybody comes because of, of, of the kind of developments. But uh, so, but anyway, that yeah. And I don't know this to be true. I can't speak for the board. I don't know there'd be an appetite of picking properties. Yeah. For assistance with tax dollars. Yeah. And I think it's the plan. The mindset is, what do we want to do that will benefit versus. This piece we really like to incentivize, but your piece, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it's hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I. So based on what you said, I, I, what I, I, I'm not sure this board is that maybe it's not appropriate to take position, but probably what I would do if, if it was just my decision is I would make sure that there was no more residential put on 76, and then think about grandfathering some that are. Because I don't know how you get out of that, and then, uh, uh, but if they're torn down, then you have to go back with the tax business, and the. Uh, but I think uh, additional conversions right on seventy six makes a little sense. You know, I, 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 so you're specifically just addressing conversions, not just. Well, if I'm going to. And somebody came, if somebody came to me and said, I want to put residences on the Branson Heights property, I go, why? Okay, I, can, but, I can show you some other land <clears throat> close by. That... But today, on the books, on the books today, somebody could come in and say, I'm going to go to Mazio's property and put in residential, and there, it'll go right through the process. I would change that. Yeah. Yeah. I got a feeling you have a agenda here. That we, we and so <laughs> the agenda is I mean, we talked about it, we've talked about yeah. it, we have a meeting tomorrow night. Yeah. And let, let's just move on with your agenda because what I'm hearing is the board doesn't want to take, and that's okay. If the board doesn't want to take a position, no harm, no foul. Yeah. It's just we're gathering as much community input as we can yeah. to make the best decisions available. Yeah, but I think what you did here is that we're supporting them. Tax based businesses on 76, right? Mm -hmm. okay. well, Individually, just not as important. Yeah, that's fine. I, I would, I think, but I think most of the boards move on. Right. Yeah, so I, I would agree. Move on. Um, a quick question I mean, just because we're still on the topic, but and I could be wrong, but Holtz Builders, were they interested in a project for workforce housing somewhere near on 76? The only one I was bell. aware of was behind Fire Station 3, which is not an extra. Okay. Fire Station 3 is J1. And it was J1. What's, what's, the, what's going on? I that? guess oh, my question, though, Larry, yeah. or everybody, is that let's say a company like that, a reputable company, they do a nice job, they're proven, and they said, oh, I want to do, I'm going to do that at Masio's, you know, or I'm going to do that somewhere yeah. on in the entertainment district. Yeah. Is everybody. Good to be like, nope. That's the question on the table. Yeah, I'd say no. Because I think there's other places they could do it. I think I would. Yeah. I Until mean, there's a decision made, yeah. nothing is stopped. Now we can direct what we see as our long term. Yeah. 
Well, and I, I think we've got to believe in this project. Yeah, well, I mean, I we're, do. we're creating an entertainment district. We're investing millions and millions of dollars, not for there to be residential properties yeah. here, but for there to be entertainment. That's my opinion. And if we don't believe in this project and won't take a stand on it, I'm really, really concerned. I think this board should take a stand yeah. on it. Who else cares more about 76 it, being a world-class entertainment district than the people around this table? And, and really what you want to do is you want to make it so good, what we're doing is so good, that people go, hey, there's this big piece of property that I can put this entertainment or theater or... or that is what's going to happen. Yeah. That's that will make you feel great. Well, Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll continue the discussion at the next meeting and as as the city marches forward. Just so you know, at last night's board meeting, the board did approve a resolution putting a moratorium moratorium for the next 90 days. And we did that to kind of pause the influx of request we're getting mm -hmm. so we can make a decision of what direction we want to go. Mm -hmm. Right? And that was the whole purpose of it. We're going to catch some flack from it. But I think it's important. You can't undo it. You we, if we can't stop it today. We can't undo it once it's done. So we said, hold on, let's get our shit together. So yesterday you guys talk about it. We approved a 90 day moratorium yesterday. But it's all based on the economy development. You know, what is it? What is the moratorium? Separate. Moratorium is basically just saying you cannot. You know, about on what? The hotel, on what? You hotel cannot. Hotel conversion from our to ours. Oh, on the hotel conversion. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that, is that, yeah. uh, that part of it? Economic development. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Because I, I, I only saw part of it because. Uh, I just saw the bike, the bike trail thing. <laughs> I do think we have to be a little careful because if somebody comes to you and says, I want to convert, uh, and I'll make this up, Andy Williams Theater to a church. Okay. No. Okay. Um, that's not within the scope of the moratorium once. Oh, uh, right. I got it. But, yeah, I got it. but if you're talking about tax entities, you know, we got to gotta make sure if we're just going to narrow it to lodging, to okay, and um, so, but I, I, I'm not supporting with building any more residential on 76. That would make sense. Okay. Uh, now speaking of tomorrow, because you're not rolling out anything, so the meeting. What is the meeting tomorrow? Our intent is, and I don't know if we're going to get there. <clears throat> the intent is. We've had a couple meetings. We've had other meetings. Mm -hmm. We've invited the public. We've blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Bring everybody together and to provide a direction of next steps. Okay. I don't think we're going to make any, surely not many, to sit actual hard decisions. But we're at the point of we've talked. We've talked. Let's should get off the pot. But there's several of the owner wants to know whether or not, because from the previous meeting, I thought that you could roll out something, but you're not. And so the question there, there is, may, should, should, should that come tomorrow? There, there may be, do you know, there may be a presentation of, here's a suggestion. It is. It is. So there, we'll discuss. Yeah, so we'll have Joe kind of give a recap of the last two meetings, and then um, the mayor's going to lead the conversation with the alderman, talking about what they've been hearing from the constituents, what they've been hearing from their outreach. And then um, we're actually going to, we developed a survey that we sent to all the aldermen asking a number of fundamental questions mm -hmm. on priority of areas of development, types of sector development that we want to see, short term, long term, medium term plans, right? Like it's very specific questions like that. What type of package incentives would you like to see, right? Those are all going to be openly discussed okay. uh, on um, Thursday. And not so much necessarily to, Take a formal roll call vote, right? The roll out like a, a guidance or a policy. It's more of a direction to city administration to what should our economic plan update will include. So, so it's, it's a good conversation. Yeah, it will narrow it down so we can start so, making decisions. Okay. And so before we move on, you don't mind yelling or not? That's fine. Go ahead. Um, I'm confident what's going to come up tomorrow night is there, there's going to be a discussion on. 76, 65, from Fritz's 
This is the 76 series. This is Spain's is seven and eight. There's going to be discussion, because I've been dictating it here for uh, what the city's appetite would be, meaning what the community's appetite would be to provide tax incentives to change this shithole. I'm cussing so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is what it is. <laughs> To the entrance, to the entrance is, excuse me, I'll try to clean it up. <laughs> Cheryl, you naked faces at me? <laughs> because at one time, it wasn't long ago, in the past year, this board was talking about putting the gateway arch right here, right? Which basically said, close your eyes. <laughs> oh, now you're in Branson, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the question, is going to come up, and if you have input, maybe I'll just ask you during tomorrow night's meeting and get up and share your input. But what's the appetite going to be when the city says the community has a desire to improve this, and so we're looking at doing some tax incentives to try to encourage development. The development we would like to see along this bill. I'd like to I'd like to hear what your opinion is. And I'll tell you what I told Max. I've got two maps. You don't like this? I've got two maps. I like it. I copied it. Did I miss a few curves? Gail, if this is taken, no, this is I. Mayor, this is perfect. This is very important. Is and and truly, while he's putting it out there, here's my hope. I can't be at the meeting tomorrow night. I would love to be there, but I'm not be there. And what my hope was by putting out that little one page your thought starter is that there is some discussion about 76 incentives, but but basically I was focused on the other businesses which spending all its money in front of these businesses. What can we do to make to incentivize and provide inspiration to those businesses to keep themselves along? They really, what I can't get my arms around is, you know, the Dutton and, and Billy, they designed this really great fountain. I mean, it's really great. Okay. And yet, we're willing as the CID to go across the road over there to the toy museum, and we're, we're willing to spend some money to make that area really cool. But then we're asking the Duttons to spend their own money. And, and if the Dutton's Fountain adds value to the customer experience, then, you know, what if we get down to Dixie and we, we I'm sorry, Stampede, and, <laughs> and we, jeez, old habits. And, 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 you know, Brian says, you know, I might want to do something in front of Stampede. And we, we inspire him a little bit. Same thing, Whitewater, whatever. I don't believe there's going to be a lot of people take advantage of that. I think it's just inspiration. But somebody can make it better than I, I've got there. Um, so, um, uh, I would appreciate what Ann thinks about what your idea is. And then I'll tell you what I told Alex last time about a little bit of history on the seven and eight. Well, I, I've already submitted my ideas to the city, um, for their yep. <laughs> meetings, um, as Ann McDowell, not as a spokesman for the 76 CID board. So I think that's exactly what you should be doing in segment seven and eight is some kind of city sponsored um, TIF or whatever incentive package that looks like, as long as the CID could come back in later and overlay our um, district so we could collect our 1% and continue to maintain absolutely. the full length of the <clears throat> entertainment district. But yes, absolutely. Um, I think that is a great idea to do for seven and eight. Yeah. Well, so historically, we took seven and eight, they were originally in the CID. And we took them out just because of what Joe Lauber said. In order to have a good CID, you've got to have revenue. And there wasn't any revenue in seven and eight. We broke it down, there wasn't any revenue. So it's not a good candidate for a CID. Then what we found out, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure how this came about. I, I don't I looked and I couldn't find what I was looking for. But we, we think the seven and eight is really important to, to us. It's important to us. We don't like how it looks. But what came back was 
It's not important to the tourists. This is what's important to the tourists. And it's no different than driving through the ghetto to get to the St. Louis Cardinals. It's all about the Cardinals game. You don't go home and talk about the ghetto. And so it wasn't nearly as important to the tourists as it was important to the local people. That's why we took it out and went just from uh, from uh, Fritz's on. Now we screwed up because we, we took in the parking lot of the uh, tractor museum instead of the tractor museum. We just took in the parking lot. So there was no revenue. Right? And you know, they, and somebody else drew the map but we should have put the museum in there because we've been getting revenue. Um, and so that's historically how it happened. I think if you guys can figure out how to how to get the appropriate economic development in there, nobody's going to argue. So. Okay, because I know out of the priorities that we're going to be asked for. Can't speak for any, everybody, but my feeling is this will be in the top so many of priorities to, for asking the city to address. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and while the, the visitors may not say it's important to them, it's still our first impression. And I don't, I mean, a lot of times visitors don't know what they don't know, you know? <laughs> it's like, maybe we're not in Branson yet. Oh, now we're in Branson. Yeah. We kind of know when they get off the highway. And I think it looks don't really look, terrible. We put up some signs that says, don't look. Well, we can just tree line. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, so that was that tree was line. the deal. So that, that's the third, that's the third piece, which which I talked to Alex about. They said, What do you want there? Do you want the people to pull off there, or do you want them to come down here and experience the whole thing and spend their money? You really want people to drive the whole thing. Okay, so you really want them to stop there. So then we got into this discussion about how could we make that a linear park? Okay, and um, but in the end, I just said, God, come out of the CID. And no one ever brought resolution into the discussion. Okay. okay, did I just hear you say there's a concern that if the city provides incentives to improve seven and eight, that there's a concern that the visitor may not drive past seven and eight to get to one through six. So, uh, kind of, yeah. And, and so it was all right, they only have a certain amount of money to spend, discretionary. So, do we really want them to, to spend money here that then they don't have to spend in our theaters and attractions? Because down here, there's no theaters and attractions, right? And that was part of the discussion. And, Frankly, when we got to, could, could we have a linear park here? Like, I don't want to be afraid. Let's just let's just pay them out so we can get something done, okay? Because it's it's the it's I don't know how you resolve that. Do so you want to buy all that land and turn it into a turn it into a landscaping project? Okay, here's two cents. Actually, I'm going to give three cents for it. Yeah. Now remember, don't kill the messenger. That was some that was a discussion long ago that somebody else was having, and. We just got seven and eight out of the study. So okay. Yeah. Myself and I believe the Board of Aldermen are clearly saying we're not focused on this year or next year. We're looking at 10, 20 years down the road. That's good. To say there's not enough tourists to spend money along the whole strip to me seems very, very narrow-minded. Should be. Unhealthy, narrow-minded. Now I won't get into this speech, but I'm starting to do a little bit of research and blah, 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 but just to throw out a point. I looked at Pigeon Forge um, population compared to their number of tourists. I looked at Wisconsin Dells population compared to their number of tourists. We have, there's other, there's other, Vacation destinations that have twice, it's almost exact, twice the number of visitors than they have population. Just raise a question. Why or what are they doing different than us? Because with 12,000 population, things being equal, why couldn't we have 20 million, 24 million visitors? The way we get to 20, 24 million visitors is a different mindset of let's 
make a park out of this and just focus on what we have, we need we want to expand movement. Um, whoever came up with the idea, that is a close the door behind me mindset, right? I'm here, I don't want another restaurant in town. Oof. Oh, that comes up in public. Well, and they, and they lived in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And, you know, so Hershey, Pennsylvania is, I don't know if you've ever been there, the whole town was built by Hershey. Yeah, I've never been. And, no, and, and they do about the same number of visitors as we do with half the hotels. And, uh, um, it's it's an interesting town because the whole town was built by Hershey uh, at the time. So, um, <clears throat> okay, okay, I hope that comes up in one yeah. of our public meetings. Yeah. Okay, so so back to the one pager. So, did you get any feedback on this at all? Provided it to the mayor for you. This is an idea of thinking from you. Is it right? It's just thought starter about yeah. maybe some things we could do with seven. It's not a board thing, it's just yeah, like, probably not this idea. Aside from the revenue aspect of seven and eight, was there any was there any other conversation just about the general numbers to get the the CID passed the ownership? I think that played into it too. We we're like, man, is there an issue with that, Brian? There was, I believe. I mean, it was it wasn't as easy as it should have been to get that tax passed. Yeah, I have zero history. Yeah, and information but I, I just want to add that was part of it. On and seven and eight. At a very high level, and I, Gail, you guys have had a lot of history, but a simple high level is why wouldn't this board want to annex in seven and eight into the CID? Well, it was all cost and no benefit. That's what yeah. it, it gives us a little bit of cost. Well, it, it, whatever it was per mile of what we're doing, so we're doing you know 37 million, it would have been another 30 some odd million more revenue. No, just to get people in the CID. Um, well, we felt like if they, if they were in the CID, eventually, eventually they would need yeah. revitalization there. Right. Right. Yeah. And the last part for us to well, do be, is, uh, Isn't that the long-term plan to continue the 76 CID to 65? Oh, it, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But that was not so, I'm, so, again, I would just, I would like this to revisit. Does it make any sense to, and not as a hot priority, but to just methodically start working on annexing seven and eight into the CID. That's the end result that we all want. Is there much benefit to it? There's very little revenue. But the positive is we're laying a blanket of our future. Give one a few seconds to talk about the CID, right? Get the CID established. Once the city does a tip, it's automatically the said. One percent, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, if you can get the businesses there, they're paying sales but taxes. But it would be a seventy-six CID. Yes, yeah, yeah. You just so it would be a yeah. tiff to yeah. encourage more right, or something, yeah. whatever it is. Right. Okay, yeah. good. It's another petition now. That, now that you brought that up, there was something related to voters as well, right? We no, were it's only in segment three that we couldn't establish it with their without a vote if there were voters living in the district. Okay. So that's why we picked three to establish the district and the rest was annexed. Yeah. Um, okay. And you can do that. You can do annexation without public vote, but you couldn't establish the district. So yeah, most of it was, I mean, and, and a lot of property owners that we just didn't know. I mean, yeah. we ran into that in the other yeah. segments as well, the property owners in other areas, property yeah. owners that weren't very active. And... We had to get a 51% to yeah, do yeah, the annexation. Yeah. So the, we this, have, it tried to increase our odds yeah, by making that makes sure. Sense. That makes sense. Yeah. The surprising thing to me was That's how many still. We, we have a tendency to think that, you know, 76 is kind of locally owned. How many people own property on 76 who do not live in Branson? Do you know the answer? It's a bunch. It's a ton. The majority. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's right. I asked majority. Yeah. So it, it is what it is. I state owned. Um, yep. Okay. Anything else that we covered? So we get okay. Is it okay. tomorrow? Is it, there's no eight. Just a seven. No, it's just seven. seven from one end to the, the street. <laughs> it was not breaking out to seven. Oh. There's no eight. <laughs> so it's not seven and eight. No, it's just six. 
Sorry, seven days is stuck. And the difference is, it's going to keep rolling out. It was seven days. I know, that's all that matters. You're going to be like, I have maps that say seven and eight. It was downtown or six. Six, six, seven years. Yeah. It's a good thing. 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 Okay. So, downtown. Is there any new business? Yes. Yes. Uh, Jeremy is continuing uh, her design work and construction document prepar preparation. They've got the easement document descriptions done. Um, they're doing modifications to construction construction documents for city review and coordination based off of the last citizen serve. Um, we put her plans for citizen serve and got city official comments on that. Um, and that's it's. That's what she's working on right now. Yeah. Uh, the next piece is currently we're working on a memorandum of understanding with Holly for the toy museum train portion of that project. And then we also, on top of that, had a conversation with Tom and uh, for, with the toy museum and Anne was there, and she can kind of hopefully fill in what I forget. Um, but he had proposed <clears throat> on some of the improvements for the for the train area. He had proposed a mural um, by I don't know his last name. I'm sorry. Yeah, Rain. Yeah, Rain. Right. He they had proposed that, and they had proposed. Um, Essentially, the the cost of the improvements to be funded by the city, which we we can't we city as the city we can't contract with a single person. I guess is the best way to say that. So that would end up falling on you guys if that was something that you would want to do there. Um, so let me stop you there because, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've seen this or not, but I I heard that there was discussion about. CID promising all this stuff on their property and go to spend that. And Ed Akers and I wrote a letter to them some time ago that said, uh, no, we can't do that. And if you're still supporting, great. If you're not, if you want to withdraw your support, you're welcome to do that. They continue their support. And I gave that to her, and I kind of think I sent that to you. Yes, so, that came up at our first meeting with um, when we talked about that, Gail. This, um, He's talking about the second meeting we had with him just a few days ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so that, that kind this, of is yeah. okay. and it was of and this was a total surprise. Yeah. Uh, when they were saying that they wanted the city to pay for. Yeah, I think they were all, all that. Essentially, behind the train. So the train's facing seventy six, and if you're looking from the toy museum at the train, it would be behind the train. Is essentially because we've proposed a, a or Jeremy has proposed a fence there oh, running nice. behind the train, and their their ask was to increase that to some sort of mural. Um, on the is it in this, is, they, is there a number to go with that? To that? Um, no, not really. Uh, they were basing it off of um, their concern was the lease space in front of the train that they use for food trucks. So they were basing that their number there off of the, like ten to fifteen thousand, I think is what they were basing that number. Does that sound right? Yeah, they're going to be told that space had only been leased a couple of times, and we're not even sure it's really qualifies as a space for food truck um, use without some of the needs. So you know, it's it's part of the negotiation, and it's a important area for our plans. But if it can't happen there. Um, then we might have to take our um, zone elsewhere. So I mean, it's kind so, of my thing. Yeah. So, so Paul, in I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just never mind. Paul, in in general, can the CID go to if we want to make a a business's private property into something that could be used for the public, and they sign an easement. Can we go and spend money on their property as a CID? Is that allowable? If you have an interest in the property, some sort of easement of some sort, then you probably could get there because it would be open to the public. But 
we, I mean, we'd have to, obviously the devil's in the details. Um, but if it's just, you know, if the, the city or the CID doesn't have, um, you know, think of it like cities will put in recreational trails, they'll get a trail easement, trail easement will say it's open to the public. Um, city goes in, constructs the trails. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what all you're trying to accomplish here. It's kind of confusing understanding about the mural and whatnot, but um, if you can get an easement where the property owner commits that it's that there's public access and it's open to the public and can be controlled by the city or the CID, then there should be a way to get there. Yeah, so this particular piece of property, it's got some improvements on it by someone else. Uh, we would like to make it so that the public can use it. But as they've gone to talk to that individual, the individual now wants to dictate some of the things that happens at the cost to either the city or the CID. That's that's the situation. Yeah, and unless the mural is going underground, I don't think it's a city expense. Uh, not unless she got some sort of facade easement, um, some sort of facade easement for artistic expression for public art. You know, we've seen those before. Um, maybe a downtown wants to create a pocket park and on a wall abutting the pocket park have a mural of some sort same issue but the city will go get a, a some sort of facade easement or um mirror, you know wall type easement in order to have access to that wall and, and paint the mural and, and then that limits the of course the property owner's rights to paint over the mural too so so then in general in your experience when something like that does come to fruition and there is a negotiation in the end, is it the board that makes the decision as to what to approve it? Who who is the person who really says, uh, in your past history, yeah, this makes sense and this should be approved? Well, I think as it relates to this, you know, my guess, I would say the city board of aldermen okay. rather than the CID board of directors. Uh, because the whole framework is the CID project is, uh, you know, it's funded by the CIC, CID sales tax, but ultimately it's a city asset. It's a city's right of way. They're the ones going out and acquiring any additional right of way or other easements from property owners where necessary to take the walking trail or whatever. Um, I don't know. Am I right in that the right of way was being drawn to include the train and the fence around it and whatever landscaping and other things that, that Jeremy and her team had planned, right? Correct. So these would be improvements in a new right of way boundary. Right, but the way the memorandum would be written, and Holly, I think we discussed this maybe, um, was that the maintenance of that train would still fall under the toy museum. Yeah, and ownership. They would right. maintain ownership of the train and be responsible for right. maintenance and probably liability. Yes. I think all the good okay. yes. still. So if you build a mural fence, then it'd be, it falls to whose responsibility? So well, there's... we had suggested it be on Tom Beck's property. They had suggested we keep it in the right of way so that the city CID, whatever, would pay for it. In deference to the property that he would be losing that he's been putting food trucks on. Hmm. Okay. The other aspect of that is that there he's in a that is not his train that is on loan. So he's eight years into a 10 year agreement with that train. So two years, it could go away. Two years, it could go away. So what we would be asking for on that is, and, and we have mentioned this to, we mentioned this to him in the meeting is some sort something like a 25 year agreement with the estate 
of who owns that train to keep it there. Essentially, he would get into an agreement, 25 year agreement with whoever is owning that train. Okay. So he want to pass that, the lease of that train to the CIG in the city or? No, he's going to still be the, being the one in the agreement with the, the estate okay. of that train, okay. of who owns that train. It would just be, we would be requesting him to extend. essentially extend and get into a longer agreement. Um, if, if there was going to be improvements there, there needs to be some guarantee that that train's going to So he's not asking there. us, he's not asking the city to pay no. for, for that extension. No. Yeah, no, it's, it, he's getting it for free anyway. Yeah. What about the kind of guy that would do that? <laughs> yeah. Anything else? That's that's all I've got for now. Okay. Any other new business? If not, I just want to look at the schedule for November and December. We said we would do that at this meeting and try to stay away from Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so, um, I'm wondering if we could have the November meeting on the 13th instead of the day before Thanksgiving. In December, we probably have two choices, either the 11th or the 18th. Well, Thanksgiving is on the 28th, so you can do the 20th, right? Let's see, what did I say? You said the 13th. It's just, it's too yeah, I said the 13th. Uh, so what you're suggesting? We, well, we could do it on the 20th, and you'll need to run the meeting. So that's fine. The 20th would be better. I could get financials. The 13th would be really tired. Okay. Okay. And the third day that I'll be gone because that's we that's I have okay. And the twentieth, put it on the twenty. Can't you send word? We get there. Eighteenth would be the week before that. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm going to leave it up to you. I know everybody has probably a whole bunch of Christmas parties and that type of thing, and so I'm it's either the eighteenth or the eleventh. Would would be preference? Eighteenth again. Well, Usually sorry. after the fifteenth, it's hard for us to close. Okay. Uh, so we'll we'll try to do that December eighteenth. So. So, Paul, I guess I should ask you first, does that work for you, December 18th and November 20th? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. I have actually, I am going the 20th. That's the week before Thanksgiving, so I have So, But he's, I, mean, I just want guys. Well, Chuck have, will be gone, too. Chuck will be gone, too, sure. and I'll be gone. Yeah. On the 20th? On November. Yeah. You want to, do you want to do it on the 13th instead? I mean, so, have financials okay. for it. But we'll offer our guests. Financial. Yeah. I just find that. Thanksgiving. But we don't have quarrel with yeah, anybody anyway. Yeah. Right yeah. So that's okay. And if yeah. not, we could cover it in December, but I'll try my best. 13? Okay. Let's move it back to. Sorry, guys. That's okay. I just saw it as it said. Was that all right? Was that all right for you, Paul? November 13th. November yeah, 13th instead of the 20th. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And also, you know, and you have rest. Okay, can you? Lady, but I, would yeah, in, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye.